Okay, uh, limit of a function is really the first step in calculating the rate of change of, of a curve. We're all familiar with rate of change of a straight line, um, you know, from algebra. And that's just basically uh, the change in y over the change in x. And if we, and if we, and if we apply that to a straight line, we, we end up with the rate of change or the slope, um, you know, no matter what. Um, it, 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 it holds true for wherever the uh, line is defined. However, if we have a curved line and we apply the same principle, we end up with this, this green line, this L here, which really only is an average rate of change. So it's not completely accurate, okay? But what we, we're going to go ahead and start out with it, though. And let's just imagine we take x sub 2 and we shove it over this way. So when, as, as x sub 2 goes to the left, it looks like its value is going to sort of slide down on the function, okay? So what's going to happen is this line, um, this, this average rate of change, is going to become more accurate and more accurate, and it's going to get closer and closer to the actual rate of change at, let's just say, this point right here. Okay, so eventually it's going to get to a point where it's where x, x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1. Okay, now the only problem with that is, is while that's happening, uh, the change in x is, is approaches 0, doesn't it? See, I mean, if these, two, if these two values are exactly the same, then there's no difference between them. Okay, uh, the, the delta x, which I mean, is just a difference, it goes to 0. And the same thing would happen in our uh, y direction. Okay, so we'd end up with a zero over zero. So what we do, we, that that is why we start we talking about limits of functions because we say, well, what does f of x do as x sub two approaches x sub one? So we use words like approaches, and that's all about you know what you're going to be doing probably for the first week is finding what f of x does as x approaches this or x goes to that. Okay, so. Before we actually figure out what the actual rate of change is at a particular point, we, we want to first kind of warm up, okay, and we want to find out what is the actual function worth, okay? So, you know, this function, this is just Joe function, f of x, so, you know, what is f of x worth right here, okay? So, um, let me get a couple drawings here, and... We're just gonna we're just gonna kind of look at these, and, and a lot of these are fairly obvious. Okay, so so here's a graph right here of a function, and maybe I, I should zoom in a little. Okay, so it's just a you know it's just a little looks like a little hat, and you know as x goes to to two, what's f of x worth? F of x is worth zero. If I move on, I move to three. I notice that it approaches three. It just so happens that f of x is also equal to 3, but we want to use uh, the word approaches when we talk about limits and everything. And that's just mainly because we, we have a, you know, this 0 over 0 kind of gives us a limiting, um, you know, process, no pun intended, uh, as to how, how we can apply that, okay? So this one's pretty straightforward. This next one right here, I don't know if you can see that, but I tried to draw a hole in this function. So we're just going to pretend that the function has a hole in it right there, but it's still defined. Okay, let's just say this dot up here is f, f of 3, which is equal to 5. Okay, well, the function is still approaching this value right here. I mean, it, it, there, there's, a big, there's a large jump from here to here. Okay, so what they'll, what they'll do to kind of get you thinking, you'll see these in your math book, you'll see uh, what's called a discontinuous function. And, you know, there might be a hole in it, but you got to think to yourself, well, you know, the, the function really, it still approaches 3, okay? It doesn't approach 5. It, it, there's a, too big of a jump there, okay? So that's what, that's a better example of why we use words like, uh, you know, approaches and why we're trying to find this. And just keep, and just keep it in your mind at all times that this is part of the process, a lengthy process of, of eventually calculating the rate of change, Okay. So let's take a look at this function. This is a pretty simple one because it's constant. C is just, um, you'll see C a lot. It just stands for, you know, constant. This could be one, two, three. But if we, if we looked at the limit as x approaches one, we would find that it's C. 
as x approaches 3, it's also c. As x goes to 1,000, it's still c. And even if we go all the way to infinity, nothing really changes here. Okay, this, this function is constant throughout the whole thing. Okay, so we'd, we'd just say the limit was c in that case. Now this right here, this is a um, this is a case where a limit actually does not exist. Okay, because um, as x approaches two, the function isn't even defined at two. I mean, it doesn't exist here. There's only one x value that this, this function exists, and that's five. Okay, and at five, I mean, what what can we really say about the value of this function right here? Okay, we we really can't we we really can't say it what it's worth because it it takes on every single y value um, at x equals five. See that? So so at x equals five, f of x, well, it's really not a function. Okay, it's because it would need only one it would need only one uh, output for every input to be a function. So and and you probably remember taking the slope of a vertical line. The slope is undefined. Okay, so this is so what we say uh, when we run into a situation like this is that the limit does not exist. Okay, so and we'll explore some we'll explore a couple uh, ways around that. Um, maybe we can work with some things. But as you can see, this thing does not have a limit, and if it doesn't have a slope, the slope's undefined. Then the rate of change is undefined as well. Okay, so that's just a little. Um, Maybe just a little bit of, um, you know, I, I think they overuse the word intuition in this section of calculus, but that's really what it is. And this is kind of what you want to think about when we actually uh, um, do, do some math uh, with these limits. Okay, so I will see you in the next video, and we'll take this a little further.